This week on Sail Up, we're talking about hull insulations and what's going on inside everybody's boats. So most of these boats here, we found out last year at Boat Dusseldorf, are all cord. And that's a foam core that goes inside the laminates, which of course makes perfect sense. Makes the hull stiffer, makes the hull lighter, and it's also cheaper to build, which is handy for these guys. But some of us don't have cord hulls, and we don't have cord decks, and we don't have any insulation. Where would we start there? Putting foams in and things is a possibility. What are the options? We're going to show you today what we've found, which way we choose to go, and what we're testing. Okay, so we went to METS this year to see what we could find for insulating the inside of a hull. And the basics of this are, it boils down to spray foam, expanding foam. It's usually a two-part mixture you put together. It can be done in a gun, you can mix it in a pot, do whatever you want. But the two types you get are usually a open cell foam or a closed cell foam. So let's quickly look at those. An open cell foam is sprayed into the bottom of your boat or anywhere up the insides of it, okay? And then you can shape it and make it pretty as well. That sounds great and it's really, really good. It's downsides though, that we actually need quite a lot of insulation to actually make a difference. But the main downside is it's open cell, which means if we get water into the boat, it's going to flood and act like a sponge, which is going to lead to all sorts of mold, all sorts of mildew, and all sorts of nasty things that we really don't want in a boat. So let's go close cell. Close cell makes perfect sense. But what else is out there? And that took us back to the previous year when we were at Metz. Let's go and see what we found. It's based on a water-based glue. It is chemical. However, they're trying to keep it as ecologically friendly as they can. So this is literally made from your old wine pork stoppers and the likes. It's recycled coral with a difference. This is sprayed onto a surface. So right here I have a piece of mild steel. You can see it's starting to rust. On one side it's extremely cool to the touch and on the other side it's room temperature. This product is literally, with two coatings, it is literally removing the dew point from vessels, allowing it to be a good insulator, and on top of that, an exceptionally good method of getting rid of dew, which we all have trouble with on boats, right? So just like this Green Buds Flax 27 day cruiser, does our future lie in natural fibers then? And the reality is, I think it does. I think cork has a place, but the question we need to answer is, how easy is it to spray? What does it involve? And actually how good it is? Because let's face it, it sounds like the wonder material. Is it? We've taken on the challenge to find out. We're going to spray our camper, which is effectively a mobile podcasting suite, with this cork. We're doing that for heat and we're doing that for sound. Obviously being a podcast suite, we need all that sort of stuff. So. Let's take you through what it took to spray and what we found out in this initial stages. We're also going to tell you what differences we have found in the Mediterranean and then going up to Scotland through the winter, how that has changed our life comfort-wise for insulation. And in the future, we're going to bang out some tests to show you exactly what the differences are. Give you some numbers on that. Let's get going. Welcome to the corking party. We've got two vans here who are in the middle of insulating uh, their vans with cork. We opted for projected cork by C Corp. It's supplied pre-mixed and ready to spray directly to the hull, or in this case, to our van. So finally, we got first round of cork on. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> it does feel good. It wasn't necessarily as easy as we might think. I think the next few coats will go on really, really well. But basically, <laughs> we hope. yeah, so we got the compressor, we sourced that in Spain. But A little bit tricky when you don't speak the language. Or yeah. very poquito. Is that Spanish? It could be. <laughs> 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 but then you've got to figure it out. We've used compressors in the past, painted many a time in the past. But basically, this is a completely new substance. It's like firing one millimeter bits of cork it's, it's, at a wall inside a It's almost like resin. porridge. Yeah, but, um, that's what yeah, I'd say. It's yeah. like a big pot of porridge that we're like pouring into the hopper gun. And of course, you've got to get the mix just right. Goldilocks said so. Yeah, <laughs> it goes nothing. Oh, <laughs> it's quite fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really coming out. We were going from 
We're not sure exactly, but we know it was somewhere in the 20s down to somewhere in the probably early teens in the morning. So massive change in temperature, which affects the mix we found, but, but surprisingly not messy. <laughs> Famous last words. The black was, well, I found the black pretty stressful. Bear in mind, we're in a friend's driveway. And it's black now, by the way. <laughs> it's black Cheers, now, Andy. Andy. We cracked <laughs> open the black ink so you can buy all sorts of colours for Sea Cork. Really cool. They've got a whole coloured black. We chose black for like the sort of garage part at the back. Yeah. So we sliced the black thing up and it's just like... <laughs> yeah, it's powder, so it's it just black. goes everywhere. And, it, and it, it's black as black can be. But it's on and it looks good. I think We've done it once, hopefully Chris tomorrow is, goes better. Chris is worrying more about it than me, actually. Yeah. Um, That's what happens when you only get one suit. Yeah, I, I got the suit. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep it for the rest of the week. <laughs> but all in all, successful. Day one. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. So tomorrow we start again, second coat and everything. And uh, well, we might not, we, we might have to let it dry out for another day. We were told this time of year it might take two days. Also, some bits are definitely thicker than others. Yeah. My so that's it, on to the next coat. To get good results, projected cork requires a relatively low humidity of around 80% or below is what we found worked best. It also requires a temperature above 8 degrees, at least that's what we found, and that allowed a good cure between coats. So when the rain came down, we didn't have much choice, we had to stop, and like any smart sailors, we just sat out the storm. After dialing our settings in, we used two and a half bar of pressure on the compressor and we added water to the cork mix until it was a consistency similar to lumpy cream. For our conditions, we used 50 ml of water for each 12 kg mix. This is the same application technique for both boat holes and van. We used Seacork's own black pigment for the second coat everywhere. This made it easier to see coverage between layers. So we are now putting like cork boards on there. So a bit thicker, 30 mil thick, thick. I think it's like the back of the tree more. Duca from Odd Life Crafting. So that is the other van. It's another YouTube channel who are here with us, corking their van. Um, they're a little bit behind us, but they're having a day off spraying. So Duca is going to help Chris cork these boards. I'm going to be behind the camera. Oh. So this stuff's super heavy, like, I thought cork was quite light, but this ain't light. This is the cork boards. I'm going to let Chris tell you all about it. <laughs> okay, so uh, sound test before we do anything. I've got my knocking stick, and I've got Duga, who's just as good as a knocking stick. Have a listen to this. That's pretty cool. And then these bits as well. Do something else hard. Uh, this one. But that you're not hitting hard enough. Go on, you should be. Come on. Give it some ninja to whatever it is you do. Dude, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hurt the van. I mean. <laughs> Where did we find it, man? Hey. Massive difference. So really hoping that the next layer of cork makes such a difference as well. Uh, and there's only one way to find out, and that's start gluing it on. Starting in that corner, eh? Let's go. Do it. And basically we're just going to glue it in with this stuff, it's like a, it's from Worth, it's basically like a Sega Flex, and I've used this stuff in the past, it's absolutely fantastic. We opted to add the expanded cork boards and natural sheep's wool, as this is a podcast suite. We want to optimise sound insulation, it's not necessary in a boat, or a van for that matter, but it could be an interesting addition. I don't know why. It's nowhere near as harsh as alcohol and uh, acetone. The download, I'm absolutely caked. This is the download, isn't it? It was going reasonably well, my hands weren't too dirty, and then, you know, one flipped around, and then what do you do? You catch it. Pretty dumb. Duke has even got his safety glasses on to drink tea, so I should take a leaf out of his book. I'm trying to make it easier for you. 
Try it with me. What easier for me? Comments. Oh, comments, you maybe. Yeah. Glasses. You, you, you see. You wait and see. It should be safe. Do you agree with Duca? Just saying. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> They like to see you safe. Well, they do, yeah. They like to see you safe. As for me, they probably like to see me covered in glue and dead. Anyway, we're nearly there. We're about um, probably further than halfway now. Jenny doesn't like the look of it. She doesn't think it looks very pretty. I really like it. We've had a secret little tap tap test, and I think it's worth every penny. We're having a tea break, keeping it British. <laughs> <laughs> right, cup of tea. Yeah. Cheers. I should insulate them with cork, make too much noise. I like my new boss, he allowed to even meet five o'clock tea. It's not that it's hard work, is it? It's just boring. You've come this far to give up right now. Are you telling me that? You're supposed to be cutting bits, man, come on! You're telling me you're gonna give up now. No, you're gonna go to the end though. I didn't say anything of it. I'm waiting for you to do it. bad. Oh. Ready for Good. That's what I like to hear. Oh, we need to do the uh, sound test again now that the boards are on. All right, come on. Let's go into that now. Where's the uh, tappy stick? Oh, hear that? I'll go down the octave. The octave? Oh, what's it called? The scale? <laughs> I'm now a percussionist. That's pretty impressive. How good's that? Yeah, I think it's the result. <laughs> so we've now had about three months on the road in the van. We've had temperatures ranging from 24 degrees down to minus four degrees, which has been a perfect informal testing bed for the spray cork. So we've got three layers of the spray cork insulation on the walls. We've got the 30mm cork boards in there and to top it off we stuffed in some natural sheep's wool. The sheep's wool we sourced from RMT Insulation in Barcelona. We chose sheep wool because it's natural like the cork, perfect. It's not itchy to work with which was bliss. Uh, but I think the greatest advantage is it can absorb up to 30% of its weight in moisture and it just travels through the fibres so it dissipates all that moisture and eventually it evaporates back off which just means it's preventing any fungus and mold and mildew buildup compared to some of its competitors, let's say. But to top it off, sheep's wool isn't flammable. Not that I've tried to set a sheep on fire and I can't imagine you have either, but I'm pretty sure that sheep's wool is fire retardant. So yeah, what's not to love? <laughs> So performance, I think it's safe to say that we're really impressed with the overall performance so far. Ambient temperature wise, super comfortable. So up in the med, 24 degrees, inside it's, it's really comfortable because it's preventing that heat getting in, let's say. And then when it's been more like zero, minus one during the day, we've got a heater installed, which goes up to level eight, but we've never had it over level three and typically it was sort of two or one because that warmth insulation was just really, really good. So super comfortable in terms of ambient temperature. We had a really good comparison for condensation because we were planning to get a pop top installed. So we had a huge section of the ceiling that we didn't cork because it would just be a waste of cork because we we're planning to cut it out. Um, so it was a great comparison. So minus four degrees outside in the morning, we've got the heat pumping inside. So it's nice and warm to get up. And so there's a huge temperature difference there. And the condensation on the ceiling in that section was just crazy. So much water uh, condensing, collecting up there. It's just dripping off. And yet the cork on the sides was just bone dry. So the condensation prevention um, performance of the cork on the walls is just insane. So we're very happy about that. And in terms of sound insulation on the podcast front, we are pretty confident with how that's going to perform. I mean, We've been all over the shop in, in, on this road trip and sometimes we're sleeping by the side of the road and when you're in there it's like you're in your own little nest, you can't even hear the traffic outside and you know on a, a less positive note I guess when you're at the beach we pull the door shut at night and you can't even hear the waves outside. I mean yeah so we are really looking forward to getting the podcast going in the Sail Hub van and yeah. Seeing how it performs then. <laughs>
So it's pretty clear to see that I'm sold on Cork. I'm pretty positive about the results we're going to get in the van, but stay tuned. We are going to get stuck into the nitty gritty of Cork. We will go into the fine details in another video in the future. I'm just stoked to see that so many natural fibers have been brought into the sailing world, like this flax and the green boats here. They're all being like, they're like super performance oriented, you know, they're winning, but they other amazing side of it is that they're all environmentally friendly and the fact that that's the second positive is just amazing <laughs> so stay tuned for what's coming up next on sail hub that is the world premieres from here at boot dusseldorf this is the biggest sailing boat show in the world and we've captured all the world premieres for you here in sail hub so subscribe give us a like and we'll see you then